Privilege doesn't mean you haven't struggled. White privilege means that you haven't struggled because of the color of your skin. I don't have enough. I can't do it by myself. Yes. I need you, Lord. Justice for George! Justice for Benny! Justice for Benny! Are you for innocent? Are you for innocent? In the first week of June, 2020, Thousands marched for the Black Lives Matter movement. Whilst many remain ignorant about the presence of racism in the UK, we explore white privilege and shed light on what it really means to be a person of colour living in the UK. It's so weird because I feel like the Black Lives Matter movement has been going on for quite a number of years, but I think ever since the George Floyd situation, a different level of um, frustration, and I feel like a lot of people of colour are coming to a great awakening. Years of oppression and racism, discrimination and murder have led to this. There are so many aspects that I'm be only just beginning to see and learn about. It's comforting at least that people are starting to have the conversation, but one could argue that it's been long overdue. It's not just the US, this really is a global issue. I was naive to think that this was just an American issue. It's been painful um, and emotionally exhausting seeing the multitude of people that are shocked or just waking up to the fact that life is harder for a black person in the UK. I'm 32 years old, it shouldn't have taken this long and there is a shame that comes with it. Black lives matter! 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 on the abolition and the positive role that the UK had in ending slavery, forgetting that we had slavery for hundreds of years before that. I'm a black man, you know, and I can speak of many instances in my life in which I have felt othered, where I felt like I've had to apologise for my own existence. On May 25, 2020, George Floyd, a 46-year-old black man, was killed in Minneapolis after a white police officer kneeled on his neck for nine minutes, which resulted in death by cardiac arrest. The police brutality happens so often, but we don't often see it. It's only when we have these moments that are captured on video that people then start to pay attention to problems that have been pervasive in society for centuries. We've been told to ignore it, we've been taught to ignore it, and we've normalised it. I was called a uh, monkey, I was called King Kong. I had instances on the bus whereby you know, a gang of white kids stuck chewing gum in the back of my hair. Even parts of my personality have been specifically put together because I understood that it was either adapt or die. Racism in the UK generally comes in the form of you know, insidious institutional racism and just general day-to-day -day microaggressions. I don't want everything to have a racial lens, but it often does. I want the black women to not have to change their hair to work in a certain environment. Yes! I relaxed and straightened and dyed my hair for most of my life because I believed that it was, it would make me more beautiful. There's not a lot of representation of black people and Afro hair as beautiful in the media, in adverts, in TV shows, in movies, in books. I've literally walked right to the end of the carriage before just to avoid sitting next to somebody who might find it problematic being near me. We want the chance. We want to be able to put our natural names on CVs. I only really started facing racism when I would maybe enter the workplace. And it wasn't racism, the fact of people calling me like profane words or cussing the way I look or comments that were made in regards to maybe how I speak. That kind of made me feel like you don't believe that a black woman like me can be educated or interested in certain things. So it was really kind of like subtle microaggressions. I've never ever had a black boss. I've never had a black manager. It puts you in the mindset that, you know, that's as high as you can go, that's as high as you can do. And obviously I'm not going to let that limit me, but that right there is institutionalised racism. We do need more diversity and inclusion in our companies. Look at the representation in your boardrooms. Do they look like me? Are they black? 
Systemic or institutional racism is a more subtle form of racial prejudice, where people of colour face disadvantages in many sectors, including employment, housing, education and criminal justice. People of colour are impacted much more than other communities. And we see it in the statistics. 51% of inmates in prisons in the UK are from a black and ethnic minority background, whilst only 14% of people living in the UK are from a black and ethnic minority background. Only 1.9% of Oxford University's admitted students were black. Unemployment rates among ethnic minorities are twice as many as their white counterparts. Black people earn 14.3% less than their white counterparts. I want to be able to be a black actor. How minorities are represented by UK media is the same way that they're represented within that media, badly. Minorities are often treated like the other by the UK media. Newspapers especially are kind of scouting to see that black or people of colour are troublemakers. When a, a, a black youth commits a crime, they're thugs. When a white youth commits a crime, they're a teenager. When they're treating us like something to, to be feared, uh, there's a thin line between the two, fear and hatred. We are a physical representation of what we can do. We are a physical representation of what we can achieve. We are a physical representation of what we can do. people want to talk about what to do, there's a lot of things, but first it's acknowledging that there's a problem. Hold yourself accountable to make sure that change is implemented. Now's not the time to go to black people for advice, now's the time to listen. Listen. Continue to ask questions and continue to listen. And I shouldn't act as an unofficial race relations advisor. You need other voices in there and not just to talk about race. You need them in there to talk about everything because that is what true representation is. It isn't being a black person brought in just to talk about a racial issue. It's letting them show their talent and the breadth of what they can do. You would never know how it feels to be black and that's absolutely fine. But you should be educating yourself and listening to people of color and black voices because they know what this experience feels like. Taking time to learn our culture, to learn our struggle. Educating yourself on black history. Educate yourself about systematic racism. There's documentaries, there's articles. And sign petitions. It's free. It's literally free. I think you elevate minorities by listening to their stories and understanding their lived experiences and then being active. Sharing things online and sharing resources. Those are all great ways for people to get involved but it's really going to require uncomfortable conversations. It's going to require people to just ask themselves, what is their role and what is their privilege? Things like whether I'd get hired for a job, how people perceive me, how much they trust me. It's really pushed me to check my privilege. As a white person, I was overwhelmingly represented. Textbooks were filled with white children, uh, television programs were filled with white children. I'm very privileged when I think about it. I'm a white male living in England. I've had a position in the whole of my life that not something that I have really thought about when I was younger. It was just my life. And though I worked hard for these things, those opportunities were there in front of me to take advantage of. They might go on to say, I worked hard for what I've got and I don't feel like I've got privilege, but you do. Privilege doesn't mean you haven't struggled. White privilege means that you haven't struggled because of the color of your skin. But I have noticed that what I want to achieve or how I've achieved it has taken me probably a bit more of a longer or complicated route to get there compared to my other white counterparts. As a white person growing up, you are taught to respect the police. We didn't have to talk about where to put my hands in order for them not to shoot me. We never had those conversations. We didn't need to. A lot of white people now are coming to the awakening that they do benefit of white privilege. White privilege is a thing. And it doesn't mean you have to feel guilty about it. You were born into the circumstances you were born into. It's years and years of subconscious training. And no one is asking you to renounce those circumstances or demonize them or feel any type of guilt, but you should feel a responsibility. Because as the old adage goes, and most of us know it from Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. It takes 
courage and vulnerability to recognize and admit to yourself and to others that things that you've achieved or things that you felt like um, were a part of you were actually you had an advantage. And I have a lot of white friends who've reached out to me and said, my silence isn't because I don't support you, it's because I don't feel like I have a platform or know enough. But that is exactly the kind of vulnerability that is needed in the conversation. It first starts with us being unified. And it starts with the individual. This is a lifelong dedication. 60 years ago, things were very different. Look at the change that's happened then. Look at the shifting of attitudes. That is what you need to speak to. With the momentum that we've got going, it's possible to make change. People across the world are standing in unity. We can't go quiet. You know, too often, these movements are just trends. They're hashtags and they're nothing more. But it is imperative that we continue to make our voices heard. You can't change the past. You can't change how you were taught, but you can change what you do moving forward. We have to make sure that this voice of reason, this voice of equality, and this voice of care for those who have been oppressed for far too long never becomes the voice that is pushed to the corner again. I think there really is power in numbers. I really hope that this is a movement and not just a moment.